What's up guys, here with you with FC Wonder Kid, here with my guy Pedro, how are you? Hey Alex, I'm fine, what do you bring for me today man? <laughs> it's a big, big topic for everyone at home, please like this video because this is the best 11 of the Portuguese league this season, and in the past in some videos we mentioned Nuno Mendes, Palinha, Ugarten we're now gonna mention, and a lot more talents of the Portuguese league, right? Uh, yeah, Alex, people are sleeping on us because we predicted so many players that are now <laughs> coming out of the Primeira Liga ready to play at the top, top level, okay? Mm -hmm. We mentioned Pelinha, Ugarte, Nuno Mendes, and many other more, and many, many other more are gonna come out. So talents such as Ivan Jaime, people <laughs> will know for sure this you're name. Spoiling, you're spoiling already, you're spoiling <laughs> already. But people, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to FC Wonder Kid and mention your 11 in the comment section down below. I want to see the Portuguese ball knowledge of the community in the comment section because yes too, I will answer every single comment I can, and which I can answer all of them. So go bold in the comment section. So starting at goalkeeper i think we should have the the same this the same choice right um, i mean when you have such a talented goalkeeper in your league it's impossible not to to play him okay mm -hmm. so i think we are both thinking of Di uh, Diogo costa Fuck. uh i mean he's one step ahead of every other goalkeeper in in, in the primera liga mm -hmm. and i really do reckon that this is the year that Diogo costa will make his move to the premier league and in my opinion, United will be the place for him. United. So do you think even if, if Dio Costa goes to Man United and David De Gea stays, does Dio Costa start in the first game in the Premier League? <coughs> Alex, the thing is, Dio Costa gives m much more guarantees in regarding footwork than David De Gea The passing does. ability of Dio Costa is better than David De Gea. For but sure. between the posts, though, David De Gea, top and clean sheets... But I like that the show. The thing is consistency, Alex. Mm. Uh, you know, <clears throat> David De Gea was the goalkeeper with the most clean sheets in the Premier League. As you said, he won the Golden Glove. Yes. The thing is, that is because David De Gea is so inconsistent, man. Because when he plays at the top level, nothing gets past him. But mm. then there's other matches in which he concedes two or three goals... That will be savable, at least. Okay, but I'd, I'd say, like, Man United's defense, when Martinez is injured, when Varane is injured, and when Casemiro is suspended, a lot more goals are more likely to get conceded. But I agree with you. I think Diogo Costa would offer an Eric Ten Hag system a great passing ability, something that David De Gea doesn't have, and in a three-center-back system, changing flanks, transition, it's good to have a type of keeper. And the price tag, too, and the age. Dio Costa is 23. The release clause is 75 million. Any top club that needs a player that knows how to pass that ball at goal, he's the best, the best option right now. You know what's his release clause? Dio Costa. 75, 75 million. Guys, you heard it here first. Dio Costa is going to be the most expensive goalkeeper in the Prem, going to the Premier League. I think. Kepa, I think Kepa, Kepa was 80. 80? 80? I think Kepa was like ridiculous money. But I think Dio Costa could be the number one valued keeper if everything goes right in terms of development. But other goalkeepers, people, Inacio Agua Barrera of, uh, uh, of Aroca, of Aroca yeah. great player, Andrew Silva of Gil Vicente, and in my opinion, underrated is Mateusz of Braga. He's been so many years at Braga, and he had a great, great season. Top three and the less conceded goals in Primera Liga. It does show, too, that the defense of Braga is great but that we will mention more of these players yeah that's uh, it's actually interesting that you mentioned Arua Barrena because mm -hmm. i'm really a fan of of Aroca's goalkeeper and i think he's he was has been instrumental for Aroca to land the fifth spot true uh which is kind kind of remarkable since Aroca uh is the team with the lowest um fans in the stadium on average this the season rate, is it 18th, uh, yeah, in the, in the table. I didn't uh, know that. Regarding that aspect. <laughs> and they were still able to land the fifth spot. So I hope this brings more fans in to, to watch Roca. But the thing with Arroa Barrena, even though he has great reflexes, great positioning, he is not that tall. And that might be... That might be a problem moving into some bigger clubs. Bielsa didn't call him up. And Bielsa called up Frank Israel of Sporting in his last selection of Uruguay. Yeah. I know Fede wasn't there. There's big names U that are there. Uh, isn't there as well. So uh, he must be choosing from the players that he's doubtful in the future since these are friendlies 
But I think Inasu being at Aroka, like it would have been a good opportunity for him. He could have uh, started even for Uruguay yeah. in the future. I think uh, it was unfair for Frank Israel to be to be called up ahead of Arroa Barrena, mm-hmm. even because Frank Israel has played like two or three matches this season. Yes, Arroa Barrena has done a full season, mm-hmm. and he he took he took Aroka to to the to Europe, man. Yeah. Yep. I mean, European nobody knows Aroca uh, around Europe, True. but now they're probably going to know. And, uh, and, and Irman Divas Lista, the, the manager, great Rich. work by yeah, him. Rich and work. a lot of people will be mentioning too for going to championship clubs, to going even League One. Even League One. It's an opportunity if it's the right club. But yes, goalkeepers we've mentioned. And now defenders. I've got a four center back. Uh, no, four center. Four defender oh, system. <laughs> four defender system. I was getting worried there. I like Gu- Guardiola would go with that four center back. I in mean, some if games. you had a four <laughs> center back system. I'm you, joking. I'm joking. You, you had to squeeze in Diamond, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Diamond. Diamond and Antonio Silva. Do you, are they in your best 11? Of One of them Liga? is. One of them is. Oh, okay. I don't have. I don't have. Nor Diamond. I don't Either have Antonio Silva and Diamond. I don't have them in my best 11 of the Primera League. Man, I'm shocked. Uh, personally. I'm eager to hear what you have. <laughs> man, man. Really. So, my left back, I think the best left back in Primera League this season, no doubt in my mind, was Grimald. Grimald of Benfica with nine assists. Yes? Uh, <clears throat> I agree with you. Um, and it was a beautiful way for Grimald to, hand, to end his spell at Benfica. Eight years he has been at True. Benfica, Grimald. Um, he's a legend of the club. He has won everything in Portugal. Um, and yeah, Benfica fans will miss him. I don't understand his choice to move to Bayer Leverkusen. Xabi Alonso, I do. I don't. I th- uh, in my opinion, I like him. Grimaldo could play at a higher level mm. than Leverkusen. But at, uh, offensive wise, he's one of the best. And it's really shocking that he hasn't been. Uh, Grimaldo hasn't been called up uh, for Spain. Actually, yeah, neither Gr- Grimaldo or Porro, Pedro Porro. Mm-hmm. B- uh, Porro both deserves it 100%. Both yeah. fullbacks not being summoned for Spain national team, and I totally don't get it, what's happening there. Mm-hmm. It's totally crazy for me. G- give me one right back that's better than Pedro Porro at the moment, a Spanish right back. I, I think Carvajal, when it's a peak game. But, but Carvajal is declining, man. But left back, 100%, Balde. Better than Grimald but he's injured. Right Balde is injured. He wasn't even called up for for the Spanish national team. But Balde, like, if I agree with you, but he wasn't he he wasn't called up. So, what's the logic behind of Alejandro Grimaldo not not? I not get you. To play I for get Spain? you. I think Grimaldo should have at least been called up more. He should be called up more. And Pogo too now. But Pogo being at Tottenham, I think things will change now. Things and, will change. And he's playing. He's playing. Uh, Pedro Pogo is playing more forward in the pitch now. At least. There was an experience by Ryan Mason in this last mm-hmm. match of the season. And Pedro Porro provided an assist and scored a goal right next to Son and Harry Kane up front. And so Pedro Porro is another player that we always mentioned before he went true. to Primera Liga. That's true. And I fully believe that Pedro Porro, second season in, in, in the Premier League, he's going to be one of the best right backs in the Premier League. I believe he can be in my that prediction, discussion. My prediction is that Pedro Porro will be the best right back in the Premier League next season. He will be That's in the bold. best 11 in the Premier League. That's bold, mate. I've been talking about him for ages. Nobody bats and I but now you know who he is Pedro Porro is one of the best right backs in the world if not to be the best and there was like I don't I don't remember the pundit on Sky Sports and he was saying he was the worst signing after the first uh, game yeah, man. that was embarrassing commentating in my opinion in my opinion I think that shouldn't have happened but we mentioned now Grimald is the left back center back M- maybe they need to hire new pundits for <laughs> <laughs> now with center backs definitely talking about the portuguese league some shocking takes come out but mentioning that and if you're liking this video like like the video people center backs uh, now you want to go for the two straight away i'll say my two center backs okay. so i think antonio silva would accept me saying that at otamendi was one of the leaders of benfica and one of the most influential players in the champions league run and in winning the Primera Liga. Otamendi is my number one center back in this team. And next time I'm going to put Pep. I'm going to put Pep. I know Marcano. I don't agree with you. I know Marcano was very important at given times. But Pep is the leader in the locker room. Pep changes things. Don't agree. Put standards. I, I mean, so, I agree with that. But but Otamendi, Otamendi and Pep are my two best center backs in Primera Liga. Okay, I feel you, Alex. The thing is, Pep was out for many games this, this season. I True. mean, not that many, but a few. He was and out a lot, yes, before the, World, uh, before the World Cup. And the way I see it for Benfica, it was instrumental to have 
the best center back duo this season, which was Antonio Silva and Otta Mendy. Okay. And I cannot put anyone ahead of these two right now. Um, Pep's still class, though. Mm -hmm. Love him. But I don't think he was at the level he has used us to. Even regarding the games he, he's used to play, mm -hmm. he didn't play this that much this season. Uh, Fabio Cardoso had to play a lot of times instead sure. of Pep. So that, that's the main reason why I'm going to, um, to choose Otamendi and Antonio Silva. But man, if I had to pick one, it would be Otamendi. Otamendi this season, I, I don't re recall watching Otamendi playing like this and being so important in a squad than the moment... He has Argentina, been Argentina, though. Lately. He's, he's been important for Argentina. I think Otamendi for Argentina, at he, given times in the World Cup, was better than Romero. He was hyped up from the World Cup. Like, he arrived at Benfica, hyped from the World Cup, and he said, come on, guys, we're going we're gonna to go through with this. And we're going to win it. And I think he elevated the standards for a player like Antonio Silva is literally having an experience with Otamendi and Pep in the national team. He will be one of the best uh, center backs in the world, people. And I predict Real Madrid missed out on Ruben Dias. They don't want to miss out on Antonio Silva, in my opinion. In my opinion. But he is my <clears throat> biggest revelation. The wonder kid of the season of Primera Liga. Antonio Silva is that player. But Pep, I just think that in that Porto locker room, there's not a lot of players with the caliber and with the silverware of Pep. And even injured, I could imagine him backing the coach voicing out saying you have to do this you have to do that and pep was always involved always involved with the team and that's why i put pep but i understand you putting antonio silva and otamendi but right back right back I, we may have a different uh, different uh, i don't think different choice a different choice i thought about putting orsonis out to right back no but no no He's very limited yeah. at right back. But I thought about it, and that was just a way to scoot him in the, the 11. Ah, yes, yes, understandable. Um, Sorry. But if I am to choose actually the best right back in the Portuguese Primeira Liga, All I'm, going, I'm going for Pepe. Pepe. Uh, it's Pepe. between Ba, Pepe, and Tiago Santos. I'm going for Pepe. Because Pepe has made an amazing adaptation to that role. Because you, you know it as well as I do. Pepe is the... Pure winger. True. Okay? A skillful Brazilian winger. Very creative winger. True. And he adapted that to right back for Sergio Conceição. I mean, a in necessity. a way that I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe him to do so. Mm -hmm. and, but he really, he really interpreted well that role. And I was really shocked by that. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going to choose Pepe. And he can provide so many assists from the right back, mm -hmm. man. And with uh, Taremi and, and him just have that connection. So... Right. That's why I'm choosing Pepe. Uh, I think he has speed, uh, ability. He knows how to put in those crosses. He can improve a little bit, a little bit defensively. Mm -hmm. But then again, in the in the Portuguese Primeira Liga, for a team like Porto, it's better for you to be an offensive fullback True. than a defensive fullback. Look at fullback, Grimaldo. So. Grimaldo so limited, and we say he's the best. Level. Even Pedro Porro. True. Ah, but Porro was, was a better sporting. defender than Grimaldo. I'll put. Yeah, I agree. But but I agree with you. Limited in terms of defending role, but. I, I'm going to put Ba, and I know a lot of, because I think Benfica noticed a lot when Ba wasn't present, at late stage especially. Benfica were not dominated by Inter at home, but with Ba, a lot of times, João Mario was trying to seek him. And this season, when Ba wasn't present for Benfica, he was definitely missed a lot. And Orsens, I like that shout, he could play right back too, I think he, I'll, mention, I'll be mentioning Orsens in the future in this video. But I think Ba had that role. And offensively, going forwards, not as good as Pepe. I agree, creative-wise. But going then to defend, Ba is very complete. Yeah, that's I, true. I, I, I'd say... He's, a, he's an all-around player. Exactly. <clears throat> and that's why I pick Ba. But Jack Sentrif Strel, yeah. literally, I was, I was considering him. Nice shout-out, yeah. And the thing is, I was actually shocked at the beginning of the season. Mm. Because Gonçalo Stevez, right, right, right no. back on their kid... No, let me finish, man. Sorry, sorry. Gonçalo Stevez went to Stril and I thought he was going to grab the spot. I thought he was going to be the, the, the starting right back. And he was completely set apart by Tiago Sanch. Yeah. He was not even considered as an option. So that just shows the class of Tiago Sanch because in the beginning of the season, I thought that Gonçalo Stevez would be class this year. And I was proven wrong. And Tiago Sanch is one of the, the one and of the reasons. Being the honest, reasons. like sporting, Ruben Emery isn't trusting Gonçalo Stevez, and I don't think Gonçalo Stevez 
will be in the sporting team next yeah, me season. Me neither, me neither. So, but I, I agree. Tiak Sench was a sporting academy player too. And great development. And now Tiak Sench is being linked to go to Benfica and other teams too. But yeah, do you agree with our defense? So my defense has Dio Costa, Grimald, Otamendi, Pepe and Ba. Yeah, my defense has Diogo Costa, Grimald, Otamendi, Antonio Silva and Pepe. Okay, people, put down below in the comment section your Primera Liga defense. Now, I had a 4-4-2 because the problem it was to the side midfielders, for me personally. There's a lot of great mentions and important for the top teams, but my best midfield of Primera Liga has at the CDM role Ugart. It has Orsens, Otavio and João Mario. In my opinion, in a 4-4-2 system, this is the best <coughs> midfield of Primera Liga this season. Yeah, I I have a pretty similar midfield to you, okay. Um, but I ended up leaving Arsenal's out. Mm. Yeah. That's, Arsenal's cannot be out there. That's the thing. Uh, what? Because I had to choose between João Mario and Arsenal's. And I chose João Mario. Why? <coughs> because João Mario... Man, João Mario had the best season of his life regarding goals and assists. I agree. And at the, at the beginning of the season, he was m more of a key player than Orsenes. Orsenes was more important towards the end of the league, mm. but João Mario just kick-started this Benfica revolution, okay? He was scoring for fun in the Primeira League and in the Champions League. I know we're just mentioning Primeira League 11, but João Mario really carried around Benfica at first, okay? And his ball management... His tempo, he dictates, the, he dictates the tempo for Benfica. And now you're going to say, but, okay, Arsenal is an all-round player. He can play at any role. Uh, he scored important goals. I agree with you. It was really tough to leave Arsenal out. But the thing is, when you have a player su such as João Mario playing like he did this season, I, I don't think we ever seen João Mario really play like this. Uh, maybe the, his first season at Sporting, but still. He w that, 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 in my opinion, was George Zouch. It was one of his best seasons, like the second best season, yes. But if you want your team, in Portugal, if you want your team to have the ball and manage the, the possession, there's no better player than João Mario to do it. I, I agree. I think, and I, I don't disagree with you that he shouldn't be in the 11. So what's your midfield? <clears throat> Yeah, Alex, my midfield is... If you say, you're saying Arsens against Romario, but who, who's replacing? Like, because I have both. I have Ugart, I have Otavio, Arsens and Romario. No, Alex, uh, I mean, it's, it might be controversial, but my midfield has Ugart, has Romario, Pot, Pedro Gonçalves. Pot ahead of Arsens. And Almuzrati. What?! You don't have Otavio. I don't have Otavio. Mate, I'm, I'm going to say, Arsens was the most influential player for Benfica this season, and Otavio was the most influential player of Porto this season, in my opinion. I can agree with you. The thing is, you look at the season Braga has done, okay? Yes. And there is one player that stands out from all of the rest. And you, you, people might even say, oh, Ricardo Huerta is playing really nice. He's, be, he's scoring... He's he's scoring He's scoring a lot of goals. Okay, he scored more in, in the, the past year. He, he scored 14 league goals this season, Ricardo Horta. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Almus Ratti just brings balance to B Braga's team. And I was really shocked because Almus Ratti was a guy that I mentioned like two years ago when he played at Guimarães or Rio Ave even to go to Sporting or Benfica. And Braga ended up buying him and what a bargain he was. He's so physical, man. With the ball, he can do everything with the ball. He can shoot from distance. Uh, he's re a really a dominating player in, in the back, you know? And, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a bit of a defensive midfield that I have here with both Ugarte and um, Almus Ratti. But the thing is, Ugarte can play at number eight position. Mm -hmm. And, man, if Pelinha is a baller, then I don't know what Ugarte is because <laughs> Ugarte... Brings the best of Pelinha, that mm -hmm. defensive ability, that position, that hard playing. Mm -hmm. And he knows... The ball he, conduction. Man, and his ball conduction is just something of dreams for a box-to-box -box midfielder. Ugarte is really a great player carrying True. the ball, you know. True. On that tra transitions, on that breakout, Ugarte is probably one of the best players around doing that. Mm -hmm. Taking the ball from the, the defensive midfield to the attacking midfield. Mm -hmm. 
and then just... he has he lacks on the decision yeah. the final third pass i think he might improve he can improve but he's still young still 21 or 22 mm -hmm. he can improve on that moment but i really think he's a monster okay and is the most complete midfielder in the primera liga so i cannot I don't sit him out the of the complete. starting 11. i think otav is the most complete midfielder in our sense I mm. I'd, I'd put them more because he's you said it he's limited offensively in terms of creation and in terms of in front of the goal he does an unreal but run with Manuel, Benfica. Manuel Ugarte until the final third is the best midfielder. I mean okay. one of it's one of he's one of the top midfielders in the world already. Okay, and he will prove it when he moves to Chelsea or PSG for sixty million. In okay. terms of CDM, I, I'll say Ugarte is one of the best CDMs. Leaving Primera Liga, I've seen, yes. And and nobody was expecting it like two years ago when he left Famalicão. True, true. But now people really value him. And you we have to put an eye on Famalicão because some serious talents leaving Famalicão. And I want to mention a player that, of course, you know who I'm going to mention. But we'll, we'll leave it um, for, for but, our subs. But in the midfield, we mentioned two players, Ugarte and Pot. Yeah, and both and players came from Famalicão. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Pot came from Famalicão Famalic Famalic as well. too. So and yeah, you might know Pot from that wonder goal against Arsenal, uh, if you guys are not uh, Portuguese fans. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had to, to pick up to pick Pot, because even though Sporting has made a really poor season in the league this year, it was the best season for Pot in terms of numbers. Was it? Yeah. Not in terms of goals, but in terms of goal contributions. Okay. It was his best season. In the league, I in think. In the league. 15 goals okay. and 11, 11 assists from the midfield for, for Pedro Gonçalves. I mean, it's really remarkable for a team that ends up fourth in the league for you to provide 11 assists and score 15 goals from the midfield. And you know, as well as I do, that Pot played the number eight position in a lot of games this season. True, okay. true. He's adaptable too. Pot can play wing and the eight. I agree with that. But I think Pot, he didn't get called up for the national team. That's a shame. He, he did, Roberto Martinez didn't call up Pot. And look, I <laughs> I think PZ and Pot, like PZ when he was at Benfica, scoring top goals, top assists, he wasn't a big player too in the national team at the time. I think both, if Pot will be a remarkable player for Portugal, it won't be at Sporting. In my opinion. Yeah, but where would he, where would he go? I, I, I don't think he fits in a Premier League There's team. even that doubt in Roberto Martinez's system. Would he play him at the wing or in the midfield? Where uh, would he play him? Uh, in my opinion, Pot is more instrumental in the wing. Um, because for me, his best characteristic is the easiness uh, on how he finishes. I think I, but Rafael Young... Jean Felix. Of course, I wouldn't start him. Come on. I mean, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But and that's why Jean Mario left the exactly. national team. He knows that he's not gonna start. He's not gonna put in those minutes. So what's he doing there? I what is he doing there? I agree. The I same agree. as Rafa. I agree. I agree. And you're mentioning Jean Mario. Jean Mario was vital at given moments for Benfica this season. 17 goals and seven assists in Primera Liga. Yeah, I think. Um, I, I mean, I put Jean Mario in, in my squad, but. Be careful with what you're saying. 17 goals, but Befica were the team, I think, in Europe's top leagues with the most penalties this season. True, true, true. So I, I think like 13 of them were penalties. True. Maybe? And Gosal Rems, 19 goals, zero penalties. That's so true. we can That's go the true. other That's way too. That's kind of remarkable. And yeah. who improves Gosal Rems is Romario. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of get you. But Romario, Arsens were all players that when they were in peak moments, they were communicators. They were leaders and vital leaders is Otamendi, uh, João Mario and Arsens in that Befica team on the pitch. Yeah, but honorable mention to a few players that I've left out from this midfield, mm. uh, namely Arsenes. Uh, he could easily be there, uh, but I just had to put in a, Bra a Braga player. I'm sorry. I, I, I had Arsenes, actually. I don't have a Braga player, being honest. I had Arsenes, but I thought about it and I wanted to put a Braga, a Braga player because they made a hell of a season. Man. They did. They did. And uh, we can mention now. So. They made like seven, 77 or 78 points. Yep. For Braga, that's huge, it man. Was, In a 34 match It's true. Uh, league. Ar Artur Jorge and Braga this season had the most goal scored ever, the most wins, and the most points ever in the history of Braga in the Portuguese league. That happens because of the great transfers, the great team they have. And the great decisions that they have playing, in my opinion, the Artur George. Ricardo Horta 
it will be remembered as one of the best, if not the best, Braga player ever. Ricardo ever. Ota already is Braga's best scorer. You know? Top goal scorer ever. True. Fuck. Fuck. And they kept him. Befica think, wanted him. And I think they he, kept he, him. he surpassed Alain. Uh, yes, he did. He did surpass Allah. Allah, another legend. <laughs> yeah, no, legend. Portuguese league legend. Exactly. A lot of teams tried to lure in Allah. Sporting a lot of mentions in the past. That's true. But he stayed at Braga. And yeah, Ricardo Horta, Andre Horta is yeah, there Alex, too. Another, honorable, another two honorable mentions I would like to, to state for the midfield. Uh, are Ide Maza Morita. Mm. And also Ivan Raime from Famalicão. Ivan Raime forward. But I get you. No, I would put him in at the midfield. Why? Um, he, he was, for me, I, I really do think that he's going to end up as a winger. Mm -hmm. But some of his best games this year were in the middle. Mm. He moves a middle. lot to the middle, true. At so the that's, that's why I could put him uh, on, in the midfield. Maybe not in a, uh, as a center mid role, but like a right midfielder or so. Okay. Um, but yeah, and I'm going to leave this, the... Um, the two forwards for two strikers, two striker positions. So that's why I'm putting Ivan Jaime in the midfield. Uh, but yeah, uh, Idem Azamorita was a player that surprised me a lot this year. Mm -hmm. uh, the way he developed. Morita. He was acquired for 3 million, 3.6 or 3.7 million from Santa Clara. Uh, Santa Clara made a huge season uh, last year, but now this year they've gone down. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know. Um, and one of the reasons of the of Santa Clara's downgrade was losing Idem Azamorita. Uh, mm. The balance he brings to, to the midfield, uh, only two player midfield at Sporting, together with Ugarte, is crazy. Yeah. And he's so, so complete. He can play every role in the midfield. The number six position, number eight, and number ten, he can do it all. Idem Azamorita can shoot with both feet. And he's an important player for the Japan national team now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great. I, I knew he was called up. but He, was start he started almost... Every match in the World Cup, and Japan did a pretty decent run in the World Cup. Okay. I I agree. Like Morita, I totally agree with you. The best midfield of Sporting this season had Morita and Ugart. When both played at top level, Sporting looked different, completely different. I agree with you on that. But and Kamada, <laughs> let's see if Kamada goes to Benfica. It seems like Milan is gonna get in talking about Japan. But mentioning Braga, we mentioned Ricardo Horta, we mentioned Al Muscati, vital players. Vitinha left to Marseille for 30 million mid season. And then you have signings of Bruma, signing of Pizzi. You have Niakite, great center back there. You have Victor Gomez, Alvar Jalo, great fullback. Don't forget uh, Simon Banza at, at, Sim at striker. Simon Banza, Abel Ruiz, and even Mateus at goal too. This is a great decent Braga, spot. Great Braga team. Completely. Very decent spot. And it deserves to be mentioned. And people pay a Tension. Some Premier League teams could play definitely Al Muscati, Ricardo Orta, and Vitor Gomez. I'd say Premier League teams could go and get them right now because they have that ability. But mm, okay, we had some we had some disagreements here with our midfield. And people, tell us down below: Would you not put Arsens, Otavio, or leave out Pot? Like who would you leave out? Tell us in the comment section. But strikers, both strikers. I think we agree unanimously. The yeah. two strikers are Taremi and Gonçalves, right? Of course, I think it's hard <laughs> to leave one of those out. Um, it's re it was really the easiest choice I, I had to make mm -hmm. uh, on my starting eleven. Uh, Gonçalves Ramos with 19 goals, zero penalties, as you said, on his second uh, season in the Primeira League. Second season, yes. With a second coach that trusts the first season. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. And just following up on his decent World Cup campaign with a hat-trick scored for, um, for Portugal against Switzerland. I don't think he's going to stay at Benfica. It's really hard for Benfica to, to, to make him stay. Um, I reckon he's, going, he's moving to the Prem. I mean... Let me just say, Gossal Ramos is the only player in the World Cup to have a hat-trick next to Kylian Mbappé. Gossal Ramos. Levels. You can't take that away from him. Levels. And if, if he's, he's a... Mo I'm, I wouldn't say modern-day number nine. He is. Um, the thing is, he just moves so well in the box. And... When the ball gets to him in the box, you know he's going to score at first touch. True. I think Gossal Ramos knows when to be selfish. That is, I think that is one of his best traits. The way he reads. And all his goals were scored inside the box. Inside the box. This is a lethal finisher that when he has a chance, he bangs that, it in. That's why I didn't say modern day is, uh, number nine. He's more of a, an old, a mix between old days and modern days number nine. 
And it's really amazing what Gonçalo Ramos can do. He's one of the most prolific strikers I've seen in recent years. Mm -hmm. in the Portuguese and league, and yeah. it's inevitable move to the Premier League for him, I reckon. Inevitable. I think, like, if Real Madrid don't get Harry Kane, like, why not Gonçalo Ramos? Uh, for United, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be either Gonçalo Ramos or Harry Kane. You reckon? Yeah, I do think o so. Ozime off. I think Nap Napoli are going to try and, and hold Aussie, man. Ah, oh, but, but it shows. It shows how much we think of Gosal Rems mentioning him next to these names. Right now, he and may not be at the same level, but potential-wise. And Alex, the thing is, Victor, Victor Ozyman already played in the Premier League, and he wasn't that amazing. What? He didn't play, he didn't no, play for... No, for no, no. Lille. He was at Lille before. Oh, he, wasn't, he didn't yeah, play for, yeah, in yeah. the Prem? No, no, he never no, played. No. I don't think so, no. I don't mm. think so. No. But at Lille, he had a great season. Let me check. And then Napoli bagged it in. And it was a high investment. That's the thing with Ozime. Like, it was a big investment by Di Laurentiis. Most expensive signing of Napoli. Naturally, it's going to be the most expensive sale. Above 130 million, in my opinion. But keeping with Gonçal Remsch. Gonçal Remsch is 21 people. Yeah, a top striker right. in por the Portuguese league. And at Befica, they sold. And uh, Yes, yes, people at home. Don't I, some of you must have been screaming maybe when we were mentioning midfield and we didn't say Enzo, but we didn't count Enzo because Enzo half went to season. Chelsea half season, 120 million. Befica couldn't refuse that. Yeah. So Alex, that's the same reason why I didn't count Pedro Porro in. So. so yeah, exactly, exactly. But, uh, but Pedro Porro, uh, but I would put him ahead of Pepe if he has done the whole season. Ooh, uh, mm, it's. <laughs> I get you, I get you, but I get you. You would have been, yes. And he is conquering um, Tottenham Hotspur fans. Let's see, let's see. He uh, slowly but steady, yes. But keeping with Gonçal Rem, show Man United, you reckon? That is interesting. I just think, look, wherever he goes, uh, if he pay plays t uh, top minutes at PSG, at Man United. The, the thing is, if Man United wants to... To stand up against Man City, they need a top striker that can compete with Erling Haaland. Right? And doesn't get injured. And doesn't get injured. I think Gossal Rems too, he's very keen on his body and the way he works towards his physical ability improving. Because of the pressure he puts on centre-backs. That's why I just couldn't leave out Orsens in this team. I'm sorry to mention, because it's Orsens and Gossal Rems always putting that pressure consistently when Benfica was at their best form with Enzo. But... We mentioned Gossal Rems, Taremi too, Taremi, top goal scorer in the Portuguese league. I think he's the top in goal involvement. 24 goals, right, in the Primeira Liga? 22, 22 goals in, in Primeira Liga, but he's, I think he's number one in goal involvements. Taremi, if Taremi wasn't Iranian or he was English or even Portuguese, people would be giving him much more love, in my opinion. He wouldn't still be at Porto. Yeah, and we, we've said it in the past, uh, Taremi would be a cheap and really solid choice for any top team in Europe. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. Completely agree. And you're mentioning a striker for cheap. If you're uh, uh, mentioning a striker and for it's, cheap... It's, it's not easy to find a striker with the size of Taremi, who is this agile, you know? It's true, it's true. And, He's and, really agile. And as a rule for his national team, he is important. Taremi is a striker next to Sardar Azmoun for Iran. So... I agree. I agree. It's not yeah. easy to find a striker. Would, would you say he's the best Asian striker? Taremi? Uh, right now, maybe, yeah. Right now, maybe, yes. Okay, so bold statement saying Mehdi Taremi is the best Asian striker at the moment. But it's but let's see. Let's see. But I want to mention with strikers, you're saying it's not easy to find. Fran Navarro of Gil Vicente. 17 goals in <sighs> Primera Liga. Spanish. Okay, uh, yeah, but I'm going to stop you right there. Okay, Fran Navarro. Se you, how many goals in the Premier League? 17. That's amazing. But he's number two for shots required or, or chances required to score a goal. But who will so, do that in Gil Vicente? Man, but I, I'm saying in the league, in the entire league, he's the second player that needs the most chances to score a goal. I don't think he needs it. I think the team just gives him more chances. Because the team has no one, Gil Vicente. Man, but... I mean, but you could also argue that Gil Vicente doesn't have that offensive acumen to create that many chances, you know? Exactly. So, for me, statistically speaking, Fran Navarro is not as good as people think he is. I, I think, well, not as good. I don't know how good people think he is, though. But, uh, like, people at home from England, from, like, Spain, like, 
I don't know if they know about Fran Navarre and Julvis. He was at Vill Villarreal, I think. I, th I uh, think Valencia before, but you can. Um, I I really do think he was from Villarreal. But uh, but wherever he came from, like he <laughs> comes to the Portuguese league. I didn't know about him. First season at Julvis, he surprised me last season. I think Sporting could have signed him last season. I don't know. I think he had like 13 goals in Primera Liga. Yeah. But this season he had 17, 17, and that shows development, growth. And Jules Vicente needed him. It was like 50% of Jules Vicente's goals this season. Fran Avach scored. You're so, right, Valencian. So it was um, Andrew Silva and Fran Avach, the, the two players that I really don't believe Jules Vicente will keep them. And I wanted to mention because, yeah, they're, they're important players. And important players. And other player, Ibrahim Abamba. I think it's, it's, a, it's yeah. an honorable mention. Tiag Silva, Vitória de Guimarães. Great player too. Do you have any other players you think should be really be mentioned? Like even Jaime. You have also Marcus Edwards. Oh, Marcus Edwards. Like that substitution in the Befica, Port uh, Befica Sporting yeah, game. Uh, ruined the match. Ruined the for match sporting. for Sporting. Well, you should have stayed. You should have yeah. stayed, Marcus Edwards. And if you want to play with breakouts from the defense to the attack, Marcus Edwards is the player for you. So I didn't really understand uh, Ruben Emery making that sub, but I mean... Stuff happens, you know. You're a young coach. You'll make a lot of mistakes throughout your career. I think I think it wasn't a mistake to pu to put a target man like Paulinho is the only target man with Chermiti in the por in the Sporting team. I just think he's not the he's not the guy. He's not the guy. If if Sporting are gonna win next season, Primeira Liga Portugal, it's not with Paulinho they, they starting. Need a striker. They must sign a striker. Must sign someone that is a constant threat next to Trincao that is improving. Next to Edwards, that I hope he stays for Sporting. And next to the replacement of Ugart, and <laughs> next to Marita too. That, that will be very interesting. Who does Sporting get for that role of Ugart? Yeah, if I had to mention, it would be players that I've already talked about, which would be Arroa Barrena and... Um, Al Musrati. Al Musrati as well. I think he's a player that deserves um, other flights, higher mm -hmm. flights. And to uh, Sporting. <laughs> uh, I, wouldn't, I, I don't reckon Braga would sell him to, to any Portuguese team. Um, and, even, and even Jaime, uh, as I said previously. Uh, also, uh, you have Godwin from uh, Casa Pia. Uh, yes. Uh, Godwin didn't play as he was expected to do so this season. He was a little bit below mm -hmm. than um, he was last season, but still, really decent player. He has the pace, he has a technique. I really think Godwin can move up the ranks and play in a better team than Casa Pia. Um, yeah. We'd also like to mention mm -hmm. Portuguese Grealish. Uh, Jota at Guimarães uh, I think he's a player that can improve he can do better Okay, um, he was amazing at Casa Pia and he dropped a little at Guimarães but I reckon he still has the potential to make something interesting of himself well if we're going with bold claims check out Yusufa from Boa Vista he's going to be a free agent great great striker man okay. great I would love Sporting to get him more than 10 goals in Primera Liga I think it's 12-13 I'm not sure on the number but It's a striker that ha has an immediate effect wherever he goes. Because he's like, he's above 25 years old. And now's the time. Now's the time. And he had a great season at Boa Vista. But saying, I'm going to say my team. So my prim Liga Portugal best 11. My Liga Portugal best 11 has Dio Costa in goal. Then has Grimaldo, Otamendi, Pep. <laughs> and at the right, Va. And then my four, my four in midfield has Ugart, Orsens, Otavio, and João Mario. And my two strikers is Gonçalo Ramos and Taremi. Para lá, Gonçalo Ramos. Okay, so now it's my turn, Alex. My Primeira Liga best 11 for this season. Playing at goal, the inevitable Diogo Costa. <laughs> at the left back, Grimaldo. Center back duo from Benfica, Otamendi and Antonio Silva. Right back, Pepe. What an amazing season by Pepe. Two, mi two center mids. Ugar Manuel Ugarte and Al Musrati. I had to screw in a Braga player this season. Um, at, at the wings, I would play João Mario and Pot, and both strikers would be Tarem, Medi Taremi and Gonçalo Ramos, who is moving to United this season. <laughs> you went so bold with no Otavio and no Pot, in my opinion, mate. Ah, I put Pot. Uh, no I know Orsens, no Orsens. That is very bold. But people, tell us your bold. Bold best 11 of Liga Portugal in the comment section. And for more videos just like this, don't forget to click that like button and go bold in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video, people. Thank you, guys. Take care.